Hello and welcome to our service for Sunday the 5th of March. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And a gathering prayer. Step out of fear and into the safety of God's house. Step out of sorrow and into the comfort of God's arms. Step out of pain and into the healing of God's presence. Step out of doubt and into the reassurance of God's promise. Step out of despair and into the joy of God's love. Come, step in with God's people today. Amen. We have come together today in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. And we come to our time of confession. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. The Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our sins. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And the peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us pray for peace for ourselves, our family and friends, our communities and our world. Our first Bible reading comes from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 4a. The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading is from John 3, verses 1 to 17. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, 
Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. The first reading from Genesis left out the final words of verse 4. Abraham was 75 years old when he came out from Haran. We are an older congregation, but we can see from the calling of Abraham that whatever our age, there is still work for us to do according to our strengths. In our Gospel reading, we heard about a man called Nicodemus and what happened when he met Jesus. Nicodemus may also have been an older man. He was a Pharisee, a religious leader, and he had heard a lot about Jesus and thought there must be something special about him because of the miracles he performed. Surely no one could heal people, make them better from their illnesses, unless God was with them. So Nicodemus decided to go and see Jesus and have a chat with him. He probably went at night because his friends and colleagues didn't like Jesus and were very suspicious of him. So Nicodemus didn't want to draw attention to himself and what he was doing. And what <coughs> Jesus tells Nicodemus is very new and surprising, especially to a man who had read the Old Testament and reckoned he knew his Bible well. Jesus tells Nicodemus he needs to be born again. Well, as Nicodemus points out, that can't literally happen, but Jesus means spiritually. Sometimes people talk about having a whole new life, often when there's been a big change. If you embark on a new career or move to a different part of the country or even to another country, if you win Britain's Got Talent, or the great pottery throwdown or the piano, if you get well from a really bad illness, or maybe if you get ill or have an accident and have a disability, things have changed so much from what you used to be doing and where and how you used to be living that you may then talk of having a new life. Some of us may feel we started a new life when we became parents, our priorities change and life gets much more expensive and that goes on for many years. And that new life certainly lacks the certainty and routines of our old lives. We have to be brave and adaptable. Jesus was telling Nicodemus that he needed to let go of all his certainties and live by faith. 
to lose all his assumptions and seek the truth, to let go of earthly things and focus on heavenly matters. He was going to have to open the windows of his tidy, organised, comfortable life and let the wind of the spirit blow everything around and bring movement, new possibilities, mystery and power. He was going to have to give up his familiar ways of looking at God and of worshipping and start again like a newborn baby to lead a new life. Nicodemus was going to have to go with his heart rather than his head and trust in God. And one of the things he was going to have to get to grips with was that God was more than just the Father and the Creator. Here in Jesus was God the Son, and Jesus was also speaking about God the Spirit. The thing that binds the Trinity together is love, love between the members of the Trinity and love for us. The overflowing love and grace of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit reaches out to us and draws us in. So Jesus told Nicodemus that he needed to be baptised in water and to have the Holy Spirit in his life if he was to join God's kingdom. All he needed to do was believe what Jesus said in one of the most famous verses of scripture we have, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We don't know how Nicodemus responded to what Jesus said and what he decided did he go off and get baptised? Did he start a new and possibly less certain life? Well, he does appear again in the Bible amongst those who bury Jesus after his crucifixion. So he seems to have become one of the friends of Jesus and to be public about his faith rather than creeping around to see Jesus at night. So I guess Nicodemus did decide there was something special about this man and that it was worth having his life turned upside down to accept his offer of eternal life. And many of us Christians have decided that too, and we can rest confident in God's promise enshrined in that verse that we are safe with him, whatever life may throw at us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Thank you that you are with us throughout our lives, in the places we already know and in the places you will lead us to. Help us to trust you every step of the way. Amen. And we affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And now our prayers. God, who makes known what is unknown, 
we offer our prayers for those who step out into the unknown on behalf of our community. We pray for members of the fire service, for police officers and ambulance crews responding to emergency calls who do not know what to expect when they respond. God, who makes known what is unknown, we offer our prayers for those who travel long distances to serve as aid workers, leaving behind friends and family and unsure of the situation they will find and how they will cope with it. God, who makes known what is unknown, we offer our prayers for those whose lives have been de de devastated by earthquake, famine and flood. We hold before you people who have no idea what tomorrow holds because their homes and livelihoods have been destroyed. God, who makes known what is unknown, we offer our prayers for those who flee their country without really knowing what journey's end will be, for those who cross the channel in small boats, those seeking asylum and for refugees. God, who makes known what is unknown, we offer our prayers for those who are waiting for test results or to be called for operations or other forms of treatment. We pray for those with mental health issues as they struggle to understand what is going on in their minds and their lives. We pray for those we know who are unwell, remembering especially Uggy, Trevor Dobney, Richard Dath, Rose, Mervyn, Mel and her children, John, George, Claire and Pat Dingle. And a moment to pray for healing and wholeness for those who are close to you. God, who makes known what is unknown, we offer our prayers for ourselves. We do not know what lies ahead for us. We have hopes, we have apprehensions. Help us always to remember that whatever the unknown holds for us, you will be with us, beside us, within us, and your love will guide us on the way forward. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen and the collect for today. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of following Christ, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their faith and follow all things that agree with it. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. And some notices. And thank you to those who came along and helped to entertain the bishop last Tuesday. I think she enjoyed her visit to St Barnabas. A reminder that the Lent group is meeting at 7.30 on all the Thursdays in March at the URC Church on Church Road. 
The PCC for St Barnabas on the 8th of March has been postponed. On Saturday, the 11th of March, live music and refreshments at St James from 10.30 with the Salvation Army singers. And on Monday the 13th, Messy Church at St Barnabas from 4 o'clock. St James is going to have a big spring clean on the morning of Saturday the 18th of March. So if you're able to pop along for half an hour or an hour between about 9 and 12 and um, wield a duster or a broom, then do come along and help. There will be refreshments. Thank you for your donations to the Disaster Emergency Committee to help the people of Turkey and Syria. Over £400 was raised between our two churches. And the Hadley Old Fire Station has been granted a stay of six months for community groups to come up with a plan. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>